Welcome to Mavi Analysis for Hedgehogs. I actually have some time today. I know it's been a long time since the last video. I wasn't even sure when I would do the next one. Um, but it's just how it is. So I do them when I have time. And that's it. Um, now we have the Corona situation. So mm, yeah, that's the reason I have time. I know. So um, today's topic is um, computer worms. And maybe I think I already told you that, but this is uh, the book I'm using, Computer Virus Research and Defense. So we will be looking into some parts of that book which describe computer worm, uh, network worm components. What is a worm actually? Um, according to this book, a worm is a self-replicating program able to propagate itself across network, typically having a detrimental effect. Um, so what's the difference between a worm and a virus? Um, well, uh, Peter Zor thinks a worm is a subtype of a virus. Um, viruses usually need files to infect. They have host files and they somehow attach to them. Whereas worms will, um, you know, somehow replicate by um, using the network or USB flash drives. Um, uh, and they put their whole body into it. They do usually do not need, um, you know, a host file to do that. Um, so worms, a kind of malware type and there are, there are different types depending on um, you, you can distinguish malware based on how they propagate um, oftentimes you have types that describe the behavior of the payload and then you also have malware types that will describe some kind of concealment method so um, people uh, don't actually see that this is malware um, examples for concealment malware types are Trojan rootkit, um, subclass of a rootkit is a boot, boot kit, um, or the behavior of the payload that can be can be a stealer, can be a ransomware, and it can also be a banker or something else. You, you get the drift. Um, now propagation um, for propagation we. <laughs> self-propagation we have virus and worm or nothing um, and worms generally have uh, are either network worms or they propagate uh, via USB drives for instance um, a typical example is WannaCry which is a network worm and it's also a ransomware so you will find both descriptions here So let's take a look at the components, the, the main components of a network worm. Um, there are six of them, according to Peter Zor, Peter Zor and um, the most important ones are the first two, which are related to the um, propagation. So there's the target locator, sorry. <laughs> And there's the infection propagator. These two components are essential. You don't have, without them, you don't have a worm. The other components are optional. Those are payload, um, some kind of self-tracking mechanism, and um, a lifecycle manager. And last but not least, there's uh, often some kind of remote control and update interface that the attacker uses to um, add more uh, infection vectors, for instance. Especially when they use exploits, um, those need to be updated after some time. All right. Um, now, the about the um, target locator. 
Um, a lot of worms in the past have been mass email worms, so they they spread via email. Um, so in order to locate targets, they will collect email addresses uh, by parsing files on the drive, or they may specifically look into um, email address books or they even monitored outgoing emails. So to see um, um, whom they were sent to. Um, so these are possibilities for the target locator to harvest emails. Um, as you know, there are also worms that use exploits to travel through um, the networks to other machines. Um, they may enumerate network shares so the target locator may do that and uh, they may also scan the network just generate um, IP addresses and then check if they can infect those um, and the infection propagator is the component that does the actual infection so um, this can work via exploit like WannaCry um, social engineering is mostly used by these mass uh, email worms like love letter and um, there are also lots of worms that will um, propagate via propagate via peer to peer and um, instant messengers um, they are still out there as long as peer to peer and instant messages exist they won't die um, yeah, the payload very typically um, for worms in the past was denial of service attacks um, um, using the remote control interface, uh, but they can also be used to um, send spam emails or as some kind of computing, use the computing power that uh, combined um, of all of these. Um, the self-tracking mechanism is out of interest for the attacker. They may want to know which path the worm took through the network or which machines got infected. So they know how many and what kind of operating system. Um, the lifecycle manager, um, some worms had a date where they just killed themselves. Um, so... <laughs> I don't think those exist anymore, like most of them uh, live forever, but some, yeah, they had a kill date. And some people actually moved that component and created the same worm without the kill date, which is kind of, hmm, that's it already. So if you have any questions, please put it in the comment below or hit me up on Twitter. I will put the link to it in the description.